Okay, I'm going to try something a little new. I'm going to attempt to paint. So I've got a painting that I actually, I did this years ago, but I wasn't really happy with it. So I'm going to kind of touch it up and see what I can do to improve it. Um, I got my paints already. So I just have to put them on the palette. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I suppose the reason why I want to do this is because I kind of look at this, this painting that I did years ago, the way life was. Um, the way life was for me. Not perfect. You know, could be improved. Um, sometimes it's just left alone for years, just being the same old, same old. So I figured I'd approach, approach this like I'm, I need to be approaching life. And that is seeing what I can do to improve this. If I can improve it, I don't know. Uh, change things around. Change the coloring, the toning. Um... And see what I can do. Sort of like how I'm going to approach a life. It's a gamble. It's risks to be taking. It's up in the air. You know, anything goes pretty much. Um, I guess, you know, like Bob Ross. I don't know if you know Bob Ross has happy little trees. Well, we don't always have happy little trees. We have the trees we have. They might be sad and dragging. They might not be great. They might be wilting, dying, whatever. We take care of what we have and do the best with what we have. So I don't have the happy little trees. But I have the trees that I have and I work with them. So I'm going to do my best. I'm putting a little white. Um, and followed by cadmium yellow. My yellow I use, actually yellow I use for not just sun, but I use it for grass. If I mix uh, yellow and black together, you get a nice green, like a sap green. So I tend to use yellow to brighten up and to darken my paintings. Um, just because paint yellow is bright doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be used to brighten your painting. It's used sometimes to darken it. Okay, uh, after yellow, I use a little yellow orchid. One thing about approaching life is you have to have everything kind of situated, you know, be prepared. Don't just go into it blindly. I and mean, there are risks, but the risks become greater when you go into it blindly. Um, when you don't think about your actions or think about what you're going to do. So, before I hit the paint um, that I'm going to work on, this painting, I make sure that I have what I need, what is necessary. So I'm starting with these paints, these colors. So the next one would be, what is this, Cadmium Yellow Deep, which is a little darker than yellow. It's uh, like an orange with a little yellow mixed in. Uh, sort of like the color of this tree. So, I got my yellow orchid and cadmium yellow deep. That takes care of that category. Now we go into the reds and the oranges. So, cadmium red light. Actually, I'll do orange first since it's close to cadmium yellow. This is my orange. So then, and if you hear any sounds in the background, that's Frida walking around. She's doing her little house chores and stuff like that. So she's walking around. You might hear her if she talks. Might have to ask a question. Or I might have to ask her a question or she might ask me a question. You know, just part of life. Sometimes there are some interferences. That's are you calling me an interference? I'm not calling her an interference. No. But... 
such as life, there are interferences and there are things that you work around and there are things that you work with. Frida, someone I work with. Hey dear. Good save. Uh-huh. All right, then we have, what was color was that that I just used? Oh, red light, so I used the orange, red light. Now what do we have is Alzarin Crimson. Is that how you pronounce it? Alzarin? Alzarin? Alzarin Crimson. I've been paying for years. I don't always know how to pronounce all the paints that I use. I just use them. Oh, that's a dark color. That's a really dark color. I'm going to put that right there. I might not even use that today. Sometimes all the paints that I put on the palette, I don't necessarily use. Just like life. Sometimes you have in your life things that you don't necessarily use. They're just there just in case. Because you never know. You might need them. So better be uh, better um, being prepared than not being prepared at all. So I like to be prepared and black, of course. You need black in the painting because it goes with yellow to make grass, the greener grass. It goes with the black to make the shadows, dark and everything. So, and it's a good contrast to the lightness of the painting. So I use black, and then we have our greens. We just have the one green that's actually sap green, because some of the greens I get by mixing colors, like uh, obviously, um, I, I, I'm blank for a second. Uh, red and green, red and yellow make green. Yeah. No. <laughs> I actually, I honestly forgot. I'm a professional painter. I just don't know how to paint. Blue. Blue and, blue, blue. blue and yellow make green. I, I forget, and sometimes I'm a visual person. I have to, I actually have to um, practice and put into practice what I'm doing before I know what I am doing. And Red and yellow could identify as green. Yeah. Blue and yellow. So when I'm explaining things, I don't know how to explain things. I just know what I'm doing, and that's how I paint sometimes, and that's how I write sometimes. I'm not a professional writer but I write what I feel. I paint what I feel. I'm playing music when I play the piano. I don't know how to read music, but I play the piano. So painting is the same. I, I go blank on a lot of things. So I'm one who has to put into practice everything I do before my brain forgets what I dish, just did. And that's how I am. Okay, I'm putting sap green down. Um, I like sap green, actually. It's a good color. So you don't, I guess, always know, have to always know what you're talking about. You just kind of have to know what you're doing. So I know what I'm doing. I just don't know what I'm talking about most of the time. I know that's reassuring because I'm trying to educate you guys on something. And I'm the one who doesn't know what the hell I'm doing. Such is life. All right, now I'm going to go for my browns. Burnt sienna. Put that there. That's a nice light brown. I like it. Beyond Sienna. And then we got our burnt umber, big tube, because I use it a lot. Burnt umber. The ones that come in big tubes are the ones that I use a lot, so it kind of seeing a big tube indicates that. That color is used quite a bit. The ones that are in small tubes, I don't use as much. So, no, I don't use this as much. Which is, um, what is that? Yellow orchid. But I definitely use yellow. I use definitely use brown. Definitely use white a lot. And definitely use black a lot. So these are my primary colors that I use a lot. And they mix well with all the other colors that are my secondary colors. Now they are, when I say primary colors and secondaries, I don't mean the actual primary colors or secondaries. It's what my primary colors are and what my secondary colors are. So I call orange a secondary color because I don't use it as often as I use the other ones. Now we have blues. Um, Corillium, Corillium. I think that's how you pronounce it, Corillium blue. Um, put that down here. 
and that I actually kind of use a lot and I do have a big tube of it and just for this painting I'm not going to use it so this painting as you can see only has a little blue here a little blue there so yes I do have a big tube of this but for this painting it's not necessary okay get this on here You know that could wait until after. I put that on properly after. I don't want to waste your guys your guys' time on me trying to put a top on a painting on a, a tube of paint. Okay, now this one is Altarium blue, Altarium blue, and uh, that's I might not even use that today, but I'm putting it there. Like I said, better to have what you don't need than to need what you don't have. That makes sense. All right. Now, this painting. I don't have a lot of detail in the house, so that's probably one thing I want to work on. Um, I don't like this tree. It's just too yellow. Um, I think it does need a little bit more blue sky to break up the trees. The, um, this is a big, just a uh, big section of one of a color and if I take the blue and break it up it might make it look nicer like this area right where is it right there I like that I like to break up sometimes you have to break up things even in life to um, get the results that you want um, breaking habits stuff like that so and then the road I need to work on so that's what I'm going to work on today now I'm not saying I'm going to improve the painting I'm going to attempt to improve the painting. I'm not going to say it's going to end up better than what it is now. But I know, I do know I don't like it the way it is now. So, like life, if you don't like the person you become, or if you don't like how life is going for you, don't continuously do the same thing. Change it. Even if it makes it worse, it's still changing something. Because when something becomes worse, it forces you to make it better. So right now, I don't have to change this. I'm just choosing to change this. But if I'm forced to change it, then, you know, I'm forced to change it and I have no choice. But right now, I'm choosing. So right now, I have the convenience to choose to change life. I'm not forced into it yet to do things that I have to do. My, um, I'm choosing to change things in my life. And when you aren't forced and, and you have the luxury of choosing, I sound like Kamala Harris, and I keep repeating myself. <clears throat> okay, anyways. Um, I, I think they call that a salad speech or something. I don't know. Anyways, so I'm going to try to change this a little bit. I have my turpentine, and that kind of makes a paint a little runnier, and it, you also use it to clean your brushes. So when I dunk this into one color, turpentine cleans it off paper towel. I have a little linseed oil and that makes the paint thinner so I could get more uh, different results and I have all my brushes. Alright, now the first part is always the hardest. Um, I also have a little paint knife somewhere around here. Oh, here it is, right in front of me. This I use to mix my paints. So you have to make sure you have all your tools for you before you get started. So let's see. I think I'm going to... It's better to work on the back than it is in the front. So I'm going to work on the back, I think this section here. And I'm going to... Actually, start off with black. Because it's easier to start with a dark color and then add light to it then light color to add black at least in this case I think it is so I'm just gonna add a little black and then kind of I'm actually gonna work from there I'm gonna try something a little linseed oil it's not the right brush I think I need a uh, 
since I'm taking a chance, I need a brush that I could push the paint in. Okay, I'm going to start with black. And I'm just going to do this. And that is a drastic, drastic change in the painting already. So now I am committed to this bold and daring move. And though I don't like it the way it is now, because it kind of destroys something, it now is forcing me to make changes to that which I have to do. So sometimes you have to force yourself, put yourself in a situation that forces you to make a change. And that's what I'm kind of doing in life right now. But um, <clears throat> right now I want that dark. I don't want that dark. And um, I want this area dark too. Because I want to contrast. So I'm thinking where I want the darkest parts of my paintings to be. So I'm going to do those first. <coughs> Alright. And you can see, see the change actually. Oh yeah, water, sure. Oh, uh, that's Frida checking up on me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm taking a brush, no paint on it, and I'm going to push all this paint that I had away from itself to lighten it. I want these shadows to stick out. So now I'm kind of dampening the black, lightening it up a little bit. Now, I'm not going to finish this painting uh, in this video, so don't expect the end result by the end of this video. I know a lot of people like to see the beginning of something and the ending of something, but life isn't about the beginning of it, nor is it about the ending of it. It's about the in-between stuff. So that's what I'm doing with this painting. This is the in-between. I'm not glad you didn't see how it started, and you're not going to see how it ended. It's just the journey. That's what matters. So I'm going to work on this. Someone's walking through the light. I'm pushing all this. Pushing it upward. And this is kind of how I paint. I don't always know what I'm doing. I just do what I feel needs to be done. It's my approach to everything, pretty much. Now I'm kind of working on this. Just now I know this is way too dark and I'm going to lighten it up but once I add the colors in it, it will push it back um, and lighten it up. But as long as I got the darkest darks out then I could add the lightest, the lights, the light areas in. Actually does make it a little bit better. It's not going to be perfect and I know there are some artists out there and they have their ways of painting but that's what makes everyone's painting unique. Every Once you learn the basics and it's important you have to learn the basics 
you have to learn from the professionals once you learn from the professionals then you do then you become an artist by creating your own style of painting your own way of painting your own signature style of painting that's when you become the individual that's when you become the professional it's easy to learn what other people have done and repeat them mimic them in fact this painting is from a book I didn't create it let's see I believe yeah this book so I got this painting years ago because I really do like his style I like his techniques let's see if I can find this painting I also got other paintings I was inspired by a lot of paintings he did in this book um, that I uh, I think I've copied uh, three I practice well, the way I practice is I take someone else's um, I look at I buy a book I look at their work and what inspires me. I, I paint just to practice, and that's how I pra practice. Um, oh, there it is. So this is that painting. I don't know if you can see that. And this is my painting. So when I say you learn the ba basics, you learn from a master, this guy or from whoever, there's a light in there. And once you learn his style, his technique, or whoever you prefer, if you want Rembrandt, if you want Picasso, if, or if you want Monet, or uh, um, Da Vinci, or Van Gogh, whatever style you want, m learn their techniques, learn how they do things, and then incorporate your own. And then that's when you become a true artist, because then that's when you create your own vision, your own style, your own signature. And you no longer just mimic what someone else's have done. That's easy to do. That's the easy part. Once you paint like them, that's easy. But it's nothing new. They've done it. So you have to add your own style, your own technique before you can actually become a real good artist, a real true artist. So it's a gamble. I'm not saying... My technique's going to be better than theirs. My technique is just mine. It might not even be a good one. So your technique is going to be yours. So do with it as you can. Make the best of it as you can. And you go from there. All right, I'm just pushing up a little bit more black. I'm not adding any more black on it. I'm just pushing it up still. Now I kind of want to lighten this up. So I'm going to take a little white and I'm just going to mix a tad bit of yellow in there because I want it to look like the sun is hitting the side of the house now I am as a right brush that I want yeah I think it is so I have to wipe, uh, clean the black off of it I don't want any more black on this Take my trusty little rag here. I also have a painting bib, so you know I could put paint on it. I have a shirt that actually is ripped right here because it's my painting shirt. I could do with it with it. It's all ripped right here. I could do with it as I please. Paint on it, no problem. I just have to make sure I don't get paint on the carpet, otherwise yell uh Fredo yell at me. <laughs> so anyways, now we're going to now there's a window right here. I'm getting rid of it. Just because I can add the window in later and it's easier to get rid of it than work around it because I could always add it. So I'm gonna work around it until I get the color I want or until I get the effect I want. So I'm just going to... Sometimes, why make things hard? I mean, it'd be harder to try to maneuver around it or I could just paint over it and add it in, and that's just, you know, why make things hard? So that's what I'm doing. Now, I don't want this to be too gray at all. I don't like the color gray. So I'm getting a little gray here. The yellow is going to try to prevent 
that from happening. See how it's lightening up, but yet the shadow is still there. Drag this over because you want the shadow to be dragged over. It indicates that the roof leans over the house. So you want this to be here. I don't like the way the roof is. And if I get paint onto this like I just did, it's all right because I'm painting over this as well. Though I'm trying not to because I don't want to be too lazy. Um, I want to at least know what I'm kind of doing. Now I'm wiping off the little white because I'm going to add white without uh, any interference of the black back down here so it's going to be the lightest area right here and I'm moving I'm working my way up to the black pushing it back um, and you though you can see there's a hint of tint of yellow in there which is going to indicate that the sun is hitting this. And you don't need this to be perfect. I mean, that is, you don't need it to be a perfect blend. Because if I do things like that, uh, little spots, it makes it seem like it's a shadow from a tree, or a shadow from something. So it doesn't have to be an even blend. It could be a stark I guess that's the word, stark blend. And then if it's not the way you want it, you know, you could always redo it, touch it up. It's no big deal. There are going to be a lot of imperfections. You just address them one at a time. And that's, that's all that you can do. That's how I kind of approach life. One problem at a time. Deal with all of them at the same time. You go insane or you just get depressed. So you deal with one problem at a time. Right, I think I'm going to work with the green area because I'm going to see what's going on with this. And this is where I'm going to take the yellow and I'm adding it in with the black. And it's going to be mostly yellow with a touch of black. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And I want to take a thicker or a more, what, are they, what do they call this, uh, um, not sure how to say it, but let's see, it's easier to explain. Here's a brush, when you bend, it bends with you, easy to bend. So the paint goes on it, you don't have that much pushback. Brush like this more dense, more solid, I guess, you have to you push your painting inside and um, you have more control over it. This I don't have much control over the paint. Um, this I do have more control over, but that's the wrong size. So I'm going to get this. That's a hard brush. So I'm going to take a little yellow and green I'm going to work on this little area right here. Now, the disadvantage with recording this is normally I have the painting in front of me so I could maneuver paint like this. But because it's at an angle for the, your convenience so you can see what I'm doing, I'm kind of having to work at an angle I'm not used to. So this is a little harder for me. Yeah, I want this bright because I want this uh I want it to look like there's sun coming in. 
from probably over here. So I do want this. to stretch out a little bit. I want the brightest area to be right here above or below the darkest area. I guess they call that a contrast. Um, as it's going against color and then uh, it's going to get darker because the sun I don't know what time of the day this is um, but the sun is n absolutely not over here if it was over here this light will be stretched all the way this way but I think the sun is more like this and it's not as close I mean during the seasons seasons make a difference because sometimes the sun is further away from the earth or closer it's summertime it seems closer, so shadows are stretched out longer than, say, winter time. They're not as stretched out. So, I don't want the sun to stretch out too much. The This light to stretch out too much. Just enough for if you can see, um, so your eyes can see the difference. And then, because this is in a shadow, it's not dark enough, I'm going to Make it a little darker. And that's where sap green is going to come in. So get a little sap green in there. Not much, because it's it's an interesting green. That's like I like yellow and black better than sap green. And a little white. Also, you, you don't want to get too many colors together. It's, it, um, I know different artists are different, you know, you know they have their different styles. Um, you don't want to mix more than, I, I tend to not mix more than three colors together. Otherwise it becomes muddy and I don't want it to be muddy. So if you're an expert and you know about coloring techniques and, um, mixing your colors you can mix five colors together get the perfect color I'm I get mud when I do that so I tend to just mix no more than three colors together so right now it's yellow black and a little bit of white and that's how I'm getting this and that's how I get this color and this is that and a little darker under the house right here it's always the dark uh, dark right on the outline of the house and, uh, same here and then you just push it I do a lot of pushing with my paintings I push a color this way I push it that way and that's uh, and now of course this doesn't have to be perfect I can make little um, little uh, uh, grooves going upward because it's supposed to be grass so it's not going to be perfect and of course then that also means that the coloring it's not going to be solid a solid color throughout it's going to be like shades different tones here different tones there because it's grass and if I go up like that I don't know if you can see that effect but I mean it's just grass growing up all against the house and of course I'm going to be painting the house so I don't mind making those little errors or sometimes my errors turn out to be perfect little effects now um, if the light is here I'm assuming the light has to come from here but there's a tree on this house, side of the house so there's going to be gaps of lightness in this area. I have to think about those things when I'm painting. Um, where the light structure is coming, where the, where the light structure, where the light um, source, where the light source is coming from. I have to think about that. And you don't have to be true to that, mind you. Um, as an artist, 
you're not you're not necessarily uh, duplicating the world you see around you. You're creating the world you see around you, but it has to make some kind of sense. Um, unless if you know what you're doing, because you know there's a lot of art, famous artists who like Van Gogh. You don't see wind, but in his paintings you see wind. So it doesn't make sense, but on the painting, it's a beautiful painting. So when you're painting. It has to make some kind of sense, but it doesn't have to stick to the rule of life, the rule of things, the rule of gravity, the rule of whatever. You create it. You make it up. If it works, perfect. If it doesn't work, you try something new, something different. So the light source is, though, basically is coming from this area. I don't necessarily have to follow the guidelines to that. I just have to make sure it makes sense. So when you look at it, you think, okay, that makes sense. If the sun's over there, that would kind of make sense. I, w I couldn't cast a shadow on this side going that direction. That would not make sense. So all the shadows have to become from, have to come from a point of view or come uh, from a certain angle. So my shadows are going to be going this direction. They have to. That makes sense. But as far as this section right here, I can mess around with it because there's a tree or something that people might think is there that they don't see, but it might make sense. So I want to put a little green in here. No matter what color I work, uh, what color is down below, or the colors I work with, I kind of make sure that if I'm painting this color right here, it actually is incorporated in this. I try to make sure that all the colors that I'm using are actually in every part of the painting. So a little bit of green, a little bit of white is going to be in here. A little bit of green is going to be in here. Just a little bit, not much. And a little bit of white is going to go in here. And then I work with that. And now this could be flowers. It could be the lightest part. Or I can go over it. The reason why I do that is because I think everything around us absorbs the colors. The walls, the walls that you see, the grass, everything that you see is actually absorbing the colors around it as well. It alters the coloring around it so everything works together in a, in harmony it's like life we all have to work together in harmony for us to be the better person that we can be um, there's a little I don't know if you see the dot here but I can't seem to get rid of it unless if I put a dark darker color on it but I think that might just be a that might be a flower in the future if I can't get rid of it, it's a flower. Ah, I can't get rid of it, it's a flower. So those are little mistakes and little situations in life that you have to deal with and you work with it. So I can't get rid of this orange mark. It's just as bright as, I don't know if you can see it, but it's as bright as this. It sticks out there, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if you can see that. It's uh, right here. Anyways, I can't get rid of it, and therefore, it's a flower. Let's see. Um, touch this up. I hate this um, roof. I'm trying to see. I guess the roof. I. I, I guess the roof goes at this angle. It also looks like it goes at that angle, but I guess this is a, the up and this is at a slant. So this looks like it's at a slant. So this is the slant and I think it's wrong as if it's should be also like that then. So I'm going to try something. I'm not going to sure if it's going to work, but this goes at that angle and this goes at a steeper angle and that makes it look odd for me. So I need to get this 
to go at the same angle. Now I'm just putting a dark paint color here just so I could work on that in the future to remind myself that's what I'm doing. So it is going to go into the tree here. Um, and then blend it in with the rest of the roof. Bring it down. Uh, it actually does look better that way, just doing that. Yeah, that does look better. I like that. I don't like this part either. So, I'm going to, since this roof actually extends over, we're going to get rid of that. So it looks like it's one big roof and not divided. Uh, I'm assuming that's, I intended that maybe when I first painted it, I probably intended that to be the, the gator, the gutter, the gutter area, but I don't like it. So I'm getting rid of it. Hmm. Okay. Um I think it go down more actually. to trying to figure out what is the best brush sometimes is a challenge for me. I think this might be a good one. I'm going to try to lighten this up just so it doesn't disappear into the trees. And anyways it's going to be picking up the sunlight. Even though the sun is not directly hitting it, the sun would be hitting the side, the other side of it, which sometimes casts a light. So, now see, that's what I mean by, I don't know. I'm assuming that after the sun hits the back of it, it's going to cast a side, it's going to lighten up this side a little bit. Whether that's true or not, it's irrelevant. It's how I'm painting, and it's what your eyes are going to see. So you don't always have to paint true to what you see. You paint to what your eyes want to see. What your eyes expect to see. All right, that's already improved. Just doing that roof alone actually improved it. I'm going to work on the coloring of it because it's, right now to me it's like one solid color and I need to add detail to it. It doesn't have the detail yet, but as long as I got the shape down, that's I work from the shape. Once the shape is right, then I add the texture and the, and the detail of it. Um, right now I do like the shape. I don't like the necessarily all the colors, but I like the shape and that's all that what matters right now. Um, and it's going to be the same with this house. In fact, I'm going to probably make this a little bit more of a redder. I might have a little a nice red roof. Just so it doesn't blend in too much with the yeah, other. Not too red, otherwise um, it's going to get lost in the trees. Just a little hint of red. Like a rust. Like an old, old wood, a type of wood. I don't know my woods, so I don't know what you would call that red. 
wood. And it's not red wood. Just another type of tree. Well, that looks good. And again, I'm going to bring down this roof as well. Put a little burnt umber with a little red. And then I'm bringing the roof down. Getting rid of this gutter. Because uh, I just don't like it. If it doesn't look like a gutter, it doesn't belong there. And it doesn't look like a gutter to me. It just looks like a white line. Alright, now I can't seem to... I have to put a thickness of paint here because I can't seem to get rid of that white just by pushing the paint. I have to actually... Um, put a thick layer of it. Okay, that looks better. I'm pushing it down a little bit more. And then I'm doing this so it looks like it's wood. Might be a wood roof. Yeah, that looks better. I didn't want it to be the same color as this. I want it to be its own color. So it sort of stands out. And then again, like I said, I put that color also in the house. On the wall. To add character. To add a little detail. To uh, personality, I suppose. And a little red in here. Because then it makes it look like the wall's a little, you know, dirty. Not necessarily a clean house, but a, a, not necessarily a dilapidated house, but a worn house. area is going to be a little bit darker. Now when I make shadows I also like to put blue in them because it cools it down a little bit. Just a tad bit of blue. Not a lot. Just a tad bit that you kind of push around until it disappears enough that you don't really see the blue. But yet, yeah, I'm using blue. Sometimes you don't really see the color. Your eyes tell you it's not a particular color. But um, it's there. It's just tricking your eyes to see something else that isn't. And again, I'm also painting over this window. There's a window here. Because, you know, why, why make it harder? I could always add the window in later. More blue. Blue's gonna be on the top. Just is like a like a little little bit of blue right there. Yeah, it makes it look cooler. Oh, I mean cooler. I don't mean like cool, like the fawn's cool. I mean cooler, like the temperature cool. It does make it a little cooler. You're asking, who the hell's the Fonz? I just aged myself, didn't I? You know, I'm going to close that window. It's getting dark in here, or dark out there, and people can look in. I guess that's better. Huh. Close that side. Not worried about it. And as I put my brush down, 
foolishly I put it in some yellow orchid. I don't want yellow orchid now. Okay, there. Back to the blue. Not much. Just a little bit. All right, I think I'm gonna take a break because I'm hungry, so I'm gonna make myself a sandwich. But that might be, that might be it with this video. I'll probably do this again, come back to this painting and change it a little bit, but from what it was to what it is now, slight improvement, I like it. It could still be improved quite a bit, but you don't wanna make all the changes in one day just like life you don't want to make changes in one day it's a long process it could take a couple of days it could take a couple of months it could take a couple of years so this is not a one day process i'll probably have to get back to it tomorrow the next day or next week but such as life anyways i'm gonna have to clean all this stuff up um and i'm not gonna have you sit through the process of me cleaning up. It's not as exciting as getting everything organized. The cleanup is not as fun. But anyways, I'm going to go make myself a sandwich. Until the next time, life is what you make it. So try to make it the best you can. Take care. Bye.